Welcome to Connect Kids Online. So happy to be able to spend this time with you. Isaiah 40, 28 says, The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can comprehend. We serve an amazing God. So let's get up on our feet and praise him. It's game time. We're going to play a great game called One Arm, Two Arm, None. Your job is to beat the screen by guessing which action it will choose. If you think you'll be one arm, then raise one arm above your head. If you think you'll be two arm, then raise two arms above your head. Finally, if you think you'll be none, then keep both arms by your side. The winner is the one that picks the correct pose. Are you ready? Pick a pose. If you pick none, then you're the winner. So let's see if you can answer this JBQ question. Who was the first king of Israel? If you answered Saul, then you're correct. Let's play again. Pick your pose. If you pick one arm, then you're the winner. So let's see if you can answer this JBQ question. Why did God remove Saul from the throne of Israel? If you answered he refused to obey God's command, then you're correct. 
Let's play again. Pick your pose. If you pick two arms, then you're the winner. Let's see if you can answer this JBQ question. Whom did God choose to replace Saul as king of Israel? If you answer David, then you're correct. Let's play again. Pick your pose. If you pick none, then you're the winner. Now let's see if you can answer another JBQ question. What giant did David kill? If you answer Goliath, then you're correct. Let's play again. Pick a pose. If you pick two arms, then you're the winner. Now let's see if you can answer this JBQ question. Who was the captain of David's army? If you answer Joab, then you're correct. Let's play again. Pick a pose. If you pick one arm, then you're the winner. Now let's see if you can answer this last JBQ question. Why did David refuse to kill King Saul? If you answered because God had chosen Saul to be king, then you're correct. Good job, JBQ. Great job on your JBQ questions. Do any of you remember what we talked about last week? Yes, God is the beginning and the end. We learned about how Jesus will return and how amazing it will be for those who believe. God's people, those who have accepted Jesus as their savior, will finally see Jesus in all his glory. It will be a day of great celebration. We also learned some of the names, faithful and true, the word of God, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Healer and Redeemer. In today's Big God Story, we're going to hear how God is Redeemer. Hi everyone, can I ask you a question? What's your favorite thing to see when you look out the window at home or riding in a car? Anybody? Great! I love to look at the mountains, sometimes the sky, and sometimes maybe it's just people walking by. Well, today we're going to peek through these windows and get a glimpse of the very beginning of the greatest, most exciting story ever told. It's called The Big God Story. It's about God's love and how He sent a Redeemer. But before we hear more, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Father, for this time. I thank you for every person that is listening and that is here, Lord God, to learn about your word. I pray, Father, that you would just continue to give us the understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge, Lord God, so that we may continue to grow in your word. And may we understand today, Father, that you are the true Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> let's peek through our first window to see where the story begins before everything and everyone existed. Now, can you tell me, what do you see? Do you see it? Awesome. Our story begins when God created our world. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens, the stars, and planets, and the earth. Let's read in our Bibles to see what God did next. Okay, let's peek through our first window to see where the story began, before everything and everyone existed. Now, can you tell me, what do you see? Do you see it? Awesome! Our story begins when God created the world. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens, the stars, and planets, and the earth. Let's read in our Bibles to see what God did next. Let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. God made man out of dust and he breathed life into him. Wow! God also made a beautiful garden called, can you tell me? You're right, called Eden. Think of the most beautiful place you've ever visited or lived. Maybe you either lived or visited visited a tropical island, a national park, or a snow-covered mountain. Great. Okay, good. Good ideas. All right, now God created all these beautiful places, so we can be sure the garden he created was the most beautiful garden ever. Let's check out our clue in our next window. What do you see? Can you tell me? Yes, it's a tree. 
Awesome. Now let's go to verse 15 in Genesis chapter 2 to see what kind of instructions God gave to Adam about the tree. We're not exactly sure what this tree looked like, but we know God didn't want Adam to eat its fruit. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Could God have given the animals names all by himself? Sure, he's the creator. But verse 19 says, he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. God could have named the animals on his own, but he chose to include Adam. So Adam named all the different kinds of animals. Animals are so very different from each other. Think about a giraffe. Can you stand up and do your best impression of a giraffe? <laughs> That's pretty good. What about a hippopotamus or an iguana? <laughs> you guys are great. Very talented people, I see. Adam must have had fun naming these animals and all the rest. Now, let's see. We've heard how God made the heavens, the earth, man, animals, trees, and food. What's, what's missing? Can anybody take a guess? Let's look at our third window to find out. Here we go. That's right. The thing that was missing was a woman, a woman. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's rib and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought it to her, to the man. God created Eve, the first woman, to be Adam's wife. Life must have been wonderful for Adam and Eve. They lived in a beautiful garden. They never felt pain, sadness, or fear. And God himself came to visit them in the beautiful garden. But sadly, something happened to change all of this. Now, what did God tell Adam about the fruit of that one tree in the garden? Can anybody tell me? Yep. That's right. God told Adam that he could eat anything except the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, one day, Satan, in the form of a talking snake, spoke to Eve about that tree. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The snake asked. God said we would die if we eat from the tree that's, that's in the middle of the garden, Eve said. That tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You won't die, the snake lied. You'll be like God. Eve made a huge, huge mistake. She listened to Satan's lie and ate fruit from the tree. She gave some to Adam too. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and with that disobedience, sin entered the world. Sin is disobeying God. Adam and Eve felt ashamed right away. They sowed leaves to cover themselves. So now let's turn to Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 through 13 and follow along. Then when they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, they hid from him. Although God knew where they were, he asked, where are you? Adam and Eve told God they were afraid. God asked them, what is this you have done? God already knew that they had eaten the fruit from the forbidden tree. He knew that they had sinned by disobeying him. God is holy. That means he's perfect, unlike anyone or anything else. God created people to be in perfect relationship with him. But because God is holy, he cannot be in relationship with sin. So sin breaks a person's relationship with God. Sadly, because Adam and Eve chose to disobey God to sin, Adam and Eve had to leave the garden. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible tells us that just like Adam and Eve, every person chooses to sin. We all choose to break our relationship with God. Wait, 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 wait a minute. 
God created people to be in relationship with Him, how were Adam and Eve going to be in relationship with God when they sinned? What about the rest of us who also sin? Oh no. Okay, I just had a moment, had a thought, but let's keep going and see what the Bible says about this. Now, even though they had sinned, God didn't leave Adam and Eve alone. Before they left the garden, God made them something. What do you think God made? Can anybody tell me? Anybody? Great thoughts. Let's open window number four to see what God did for them. Okay, can you tell me, what do you see? Can you tell me? Yes, God made clothes out of animal skins for Adam and Eve before they left the garden. The clothes weren't all that God gave Adam and Eve. God gave them a promise as well, that he would provide a way for our sins to be removed. God promised to send a redeemer, one who would pay the price for all our sins and heal our broken relationship with God. Now imagine if you owned a million dollars and you could never pay it back. A redeemer would be someone who would pay that debt for you. Our sin is so much greater than a million dollars. Our debt for sin is spending eternity or forever and ever away from God. Who is, who is the redeemer whom God sent? Can you tell me? That's right, God's son, Jesus Christ. Jesus was completely a man like Adam and still completely God. We don't understand it, we just know it's true. Jesus never sinned, so when he died on the cross, he paid for our sins. He paid so we can be restored to right relationship with God. God created, create, God created us to be with him. Even when sin entered the world, God had a plan to make the way for us to be with him once again. Who is the way? Can you shout it out? Jesus. God loves us and created us to be with him. Can we hold our hands out just like this? And let's get ready to receive your blessing. You, Lord, are our Father, and we are the clay. You are the potter, and we are all the work of your hand. Isaiah 64, verse 8. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that fully well. May you know that God, creator of the heavens and the earth, also created you. May you find peace knowing that he has made the way for you to be in relationship with him. Take care and see you next week. Bye everyone. Today we discovered why God needed to send Jesus as our Redeemer. All people sin, and sin breaks our right relationship with God. When Jesus died on the cross, He paid for our sins so we can have a restored relationship with God. Because Jesus loves us so much, He doesn't want us to hide from Him when we feel like we've done something bad. He knows about it anyway. God wants us to come to Him with our worries, our fears, and our sins and give them over to Him. God wants to forgive our sins. He wants us to free us from things like worry and fear that keeps us from enjoying our lives with relationship with Him. Today, I'd like to invite you to spend some time talking with God. What hard things are you dealing with? What things do you need Jesus to redeem in your life? Maybe you need to ask Jesus to forgive you from sin. Maybe you know he's forgiven you, but you need him to take your guilt. Or maybe you're struggling with fear, shame, worry, or feeling tempted to do things you know are wrong. Talk to God about these things. He wants to hear from you. God wants to be in a relationship with you. Let's end our time with a song.
Hey kids, yesterday was our collection day for our BGMC Epic Give Day Challenge. And I want to say thank you to all you brave souls that came out yesterday and brought in your donation. If you missed yesterday, there's still time to turn in your buddy barrel. You can text me at 808-640-9698 and I can come and pick it up from you or you can drop it off at Connect Point Church by Sunday, September 13th, 2020. Thank you for helping the missionaries during this time to get the good news out that Jesus loves the children and their families around the world. Until next time, be safe and healthy. Bye.